Hey guys and happy Saturday. Today is the So You Think You Can Craft Challenge and the item of the month is Tumbling Tower Blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and for this project you're going to need 72 blocks which I think is how many comes in that new bigger box. So you're going to need one of those boxes or whatever adds up to 72 and you're going to start off by making for each cube now I made three cubes each cube you need 12 sets of two so you're gonna need 24 cubes I mean 24 Jenga blocks per cube and you're just gonna glue them together in sets of two like you see me doing here and you can use hot glue wood glue whatever kind of glue you want I use the Gorilla glue sticks and like I always say, those are the best ones in my opinion, and those are the only ones that I really use because they stick together perfectly. So like I said, you're going to go ahead and make 12 sets of two per cube. And I just went ahead and I glued all of them together at once and then just kind of set them to the side and started working on the cubes. But you can do this, you know, however you want to do it. And once I was done gluing together all of those sets of two, I'm going to start assembling the cube. So I'm going to start off by taking two of the pieces and gluing one end of the piece to the, it's not really the end, it's like the inside of it as you see me doing here. I don't know how to really explain it, but as you see me doing here and then the next piece is going to go on the inside of the bottom of it and like I said it makes more sense as you watch me doing it rather than how I'm explaining it because for some reason words are hard today but yeah you just go ahead glue them all together and then that last piece that you're gonna glue in there you're gonna attach to the you know to the bottom and then to the side of the other ones like this and when you do this part, you're going to have to kind of adjust it because, you know, these tumbling tower blocks aren't all the same size. They're not created equally. So you're going to kind of have to adjust things, kind of hold things together so that everything is as even as possible. And these actually turned out pretty well. Now, I think the first one that I made was kind of messed up. But after that one, you know, I was able to kind of make them a lot more even once you start doing them, you know, it becomes a little bit easier and they became a little bit more even. And you can always just heat it up with your heat gun or a blow dryer if you need to take it apart. Because with this Gorilla Glue, if you try breaking them apart, it sometimes takes the wood from the other from the other piece. So you don't want to just snap it apart because then you'll end up messing up the wood. But you just take your heat gun, blow dryer, and heat it up, and then you can kind of adjust it as you need to. And um, like I said, when you do this last piece, you will have to kind of hold them together so that the pieces are even and they're lined up and you have a nice, perfect little square there. So then once you have those two pieces, which will be like the top and the bottom of the cube, you're going to need four more sets of two, which I thought I had glued them all at once. But I think for this one I didn't. I did go through when I was making my other ones and just glued them all together at once. Um, but you'll need four sets of two, another four sets of two. And you're going to use those as the connecting pieces for your cube. So once you finish gluing all those together, you're going to put one on each corner. And when you glue the top and the bottom together... Just so that there's like some consistency, just make sure that the pieces are all lined up the same way. Obviously, if you don't care, you know, how it, whether it looks consistent or not, it doesn't matter. But I just liked it to be consistent. So I went ahead, glued the four sets of two on each corner of the box and just make sure they're lined up the same way. Just so, like I said, it looks consistent and even and the same all the way around when you're gluing all the other cubes together they'll look the same then um, once you're done gluing all the little connecting pieces on there you're just going to go ahead and then glue the top piece on there now when you glue the top piece on there again because these pieces you know these tumbling tower blocks are kind of uneven they're not all created equally you have to make sure that it's lined up 
and you have to make sure that you kind of adjust it as you put it on. This one piece did not turn out perfect, but I was able to go back and kind of adjust it afterwards. Like I said, I took my heat gun, heated it up and moved the pieces as I needed to, but you'll see it's a little uneven when, um, when I glue it together. But again, I fix it. I didn't show that part because I kind of did it after the fact, but you'll see, um, once I finish gluing it together, there's like one of the legs that's kind of off a little bit. And, you know, it happens there. Again, these things are not perfect. So it kind of messed up. So you see there in the top left hand corner, I kind of had to adjust it a little bit and it didn't stick the right way even after I adjusted it. So once it was dry, I went ahead and went through and I fixed it after the fact. But that's the good thing about, you know, using hot glue. It's kind of, you know, a little bit more forgiving, like you see right there on the bottom. I couldn't get that piece off right now because it had already set. <laughs> so once I was done doing it, I went ahead and fixed it. So you're going to make three of these, use the same technique, doing all of them, obviously. And then you're going to need three of these little desk lamps from the Dollar Tree. And um, they actually cut really easily. I didn't think they were going to be that. I thought it was like a wire or something going to be in there. They just cut really easily and then um, you just want to take that and glue it to one of the corners of the cube now I used hot glue and it worked perfectly except for when I took it outside I'll show you that later <laughs> um, but you can use e6000 crazy glue whatever kind of glue you want to use but the hot glue worked you know worked perfectly and it sets a lot faster so I went ahead, put a nice, decent amount of hot glue in that little corner of the cube. And then I just stuck the end of the lamp in there or the, yeah, the end of the little desk lamp there. And if you don't find these, you can, you know, look for any other type of these little clip on lamps or any other lamps that the Dollar Tree has. And then I just took the box, uh, the box of the tumbling tower blocks and used that to kind of hold it up there. And then once it was dry, um, I should have done this now learn from my mistakes and do as I say not as I do you're going to want to tape off like the clear part of the lamp now this is just so you can do it the way that I did it obviously if you want it white then you're not going to have to do this but um tape it off before you glue it in and paint it or spray paint it before you glue it in because this was a pain in the butt to do. I had to try and trying to get inside the little cube and put the tape on. It was a pain in the butt. So do this before you glue the light in and um, it'll make your life a lot easier. <laughs> so I went ahead and I just kind of glued off all the parts that I didn't want to be spray painted black. And I did this for all the lamps and I wanted the little metal, um, little what's that handle I don't know what that part is a little stem there I wanted that to remain like that silver color so I went ahead and taped that off too so like I said this would have been a lot easier if I would have done it before putting it on the cube so anyway I went ahead did that to all three of them <clears throat> excuse me took them outside spray painted them black so guys, while that's drying, I'm going to tell you that my co-host today is the amazing Angela Jones. Her channel is Angela Jones DIY and be sure to head on over, check out her channel. She is amazing. She's super talented and I'm just so happy and honored that she agreed to co-host with me today. And if you're coming over here from the playlist, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you're returning, you know, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. So guys, I'm going to have the information and the link for the playlist and Angela's information in my description box. So head on over and check out the playlist and check out all the inspiration for things to do with Jenga blocks. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I have this piece of wood in my stash and I think it's like the front of a drawer or something like that. I just took it outside, sanded it down, and then I'm using my Craft Smart. Uh, wax and I'm just going to stain it now you can stain it paint it do whatever you want to do with it but I really like this color of the stain so I use that then I got these little hooks I believe I got these at either either Dollar Tree or Dollar General 
either one and then I had a few extra of these little eye hooks that I keep in my stash all the time that I take off of other projects or you know anything like that so I'm going to take four of these little eye hooks and I'm going to put one on each corner of the I guess it's the back of this piece of wood and then I'm going to put one in each corner and then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to measure out where I want my hooks where I'm going to have my little hang lights hanging from and I'm going to use my very sophisticated measuring tool which is the Chenga block box because I couldn't find my ruler um, <laughs> but it worked out perfectly it was exactly the, the length or the you know the size that I needed initially then I decided that I didn't like the way that it looked so I ended up changing it but I'm going to show you how I did this here so I'm just going to take the eye hooks measure out where I want them put those in and like I said I use I did three but you can do as many cubes as you want depending on how big of a piece you want I just did three because my inspiration piece and you know what I'll have to insert my inspiration piece somewhere around here maybe right here all right, so that's my inspiration piece, just so you have an idea where I got it from. So like I said, I went ahead and I put all these eye hooks in here. And then when I was looking at the way that it looked, I didn't really like how close together they were. So a little bit later, you'll see that I kind of separated the last, the, the two on the ends. I kind of brought them out a little bit and put them closer to the end of the wood. But you'll see that later. So once you have all the eye hooks in there, um, you're going to go ahead and this is what it's going to look like. Then I got these chains from, okay, so here is where I had these outside drying after I spray painted them. And it's like, it was like 90 something degrees that day and the hot glue started melting <laughs> on my pieces. So just be careful if you're taking them outside and it's hot where you are, your hot glue will start melting. So I had to kind of re-glue <laughs> some of the lights on there and the Jenga blocks were okay, but the lights were melting off. So just be careful. It, you know, I didn't, I didn't think about it. I had them sitting out there drying and then I went out there and one of the lights was drooping. So yeah, anyway. <laughs> so once you get those spray painted, you're going to have to take that tape off. And again, this was a pain in the butt, so I'm not going to make you watch me do that. But yeah, it was a pain in the butt. It took me forever. So like I said, do that before, you know, spray paint your little lights before you glue them in. Makes your life a lot easier. So I'm going to be using these uh, plant hanger chain thingies from the Dollar Tree. And I had a couple of, I had a couple of them. And then I had some of the chains that were left over from a different project. So I took one, added it to, I had an extra one that I used. I added that to one of the ones so that it would have four chains on it as opposed to just the three. And then I separated the chains from the hook that you use to hang it with. That's a mouthful. Sounds so confusing. But you'll see what I'm talking about. I just removed the chain so that I can kind of manipulate them and move them around here. And then... What I decided to do was get some thumbtacks and that's how I'm going to attach the chain to the little cubes just because I didn't want glue, you know, it was, you know, it was just going to be a mess. So I decided to just take some thumbtacks. Now, if you have ones that are black, that may work a little bit better, or you can just kind of paint the ones that you have black. I didn't really mind the silver, kind of just added a little touch to it. If you want, you can even add thumbtacks to like each corner of the cube and that would be cute as a little accent, kind of look like little brad nails or something like, or, you know, little, uh, what are those things called? Um, I can't remember what they're called, but it'll just be like decorative um, pieces on there. But I only use the one and that's what I use to hang the chains up. So what I'm doing now is going to measure out because I want the middle cube or the middle fixture to be shorter than the two outside ones so I'm just going to kind of measure it out see where I want it and then I'm going to you know adjust the chain and all I did was measure it out and then once it was measured out I just took my pliers opened up one of the the chain links and removed the ones that I didn't want on there anymore 
just so that it can, you know, be the right length. And of course, you can leave them all one length. You can you can do whatever you want. But I wanted it to look like my inspiration piece as close as possible. And I actually considered using like a round um, piece for the top. But I really liked how this wood looked and the grain of it. So that's why I went with this one. Um, so again, I just went ahead, did the same thing. Use a thumbtack, attach the chain to the, the shorter chain to the middle piece and then I attached that to the eye hook and on the piece of wood so then what I did was I took the chain that had the four or the hook the hanger sorry the hanger that had the four chains on it and I attached each one of the chains to the hooks on the well, I guess that's the top of the piece. Um, I attached to that. So that's how it's going to hang from wherever you decide to hang it from. I was debating like where I wanted to hang this at. And I actually think um, I'm going to be using this in my basement. Uh, I'm not 100% sure yet because we have a nice piece in our dining room and that's really the only other place oops sorry about that guys I hit the camera with the wood um so I think I'm going to use this like in my craft space or in our area downstairs that's if my husband doesn't steal it first <laughs> so this is where I kind of hung I just hung it up on my window just to kind of see how it looked and this is I didn't like how close they were so that's when I decided to go ahead adjust it and make the two pieces on the outside a little bit wider or you know further out and I just you know took the chains off switched the eye hooks kind of put them like I said I just put them a little further out I didn't use a I didn't measure anything I just eyeballed it you know live on the wild side I just eyeballed it <laughs> and just put them in there you know where I thought it was the right space so if you want to get technical with it you can you know measure it I left the middle one there and then I just moved the two on the outside further out. And then once it was done, guys, I absolutely love this piece. Um, I love it. It's probably one of my favorites. I have a couple of favorites, but this is I mean, this is pretty cool and it matches some of my other favorite pieces. So I think I have that modern industrial farmhouse thing going that I really like. So this is what it looks like when it's all done, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Again, be sure to hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Check out Angela's channel and check out the playlist. Until next time, be blessed and be the reason someone smiles. Bye, guys.